I'm Phil Salate. I'm a composer and a faculty member at SUNY Potsdam's Crane School of Music in Northern New York. I am also the co-author of Pink Floyd, BBC Radio, 1967 to 1971, with my friend and colleague Ian Priston. Today, I would like to read for you an excerpt from the book, taken from the chapter about Pink Floyd's BBC session of December 2nd, 1968, and specifically discussing their performance at that session of the piece Interstellar Overdrive. With David Gilmore in the band, Interstellar Overdrive became a far more scripted piece, for better or worse. However, this particular performance for the BBC was anything but rote. Though abbreviated, it stands out unmistakably as dating from the era that gave us more, Amagama, and The Man and the Journey. One key is the grand piano, an instrument that, before the advent of echoes, was only intermittently available to Wright at the band's concert performances. Wright's approach to the piano incorporates a number of techniques associated with the avant-garde, and the instrument itself contributes a timbre indelibly associated with the Floyd's most experimental years, particularly when Wright plays inside it. It also evokes a web of intertextual associations. That is, one can hear evocations of many other songs, past and future, in this single performance. Wright's pounding piano clusters, which probably owe more to Cecil Taylor than Henry Cowell, are, when paired with Mason's pounding toms and Wright's own overdubbed dissonant organ line, the indisputable prototype for Up the Khyber from Moore. His low piano notes in the song's introduction, unique to this version, are evocative of the speed-shifted, warbling piano tones that mark the truly odd take one of Sid's Silas slang. And his bandmates get into the action. Roger's TikTok effect on the bass guitar was a device featured in many a Pink Floyd song until it found its permanent home in time, while the repetitive bass line that emerges in the song's seventh minute is none other than the labyrinths of Oximenes from The Man and the Journey. Whether one views the band's relentless self-plagiarism as evidence of their self-confessed laziness, or as evidence of their wisdom in never letting a decent idea go to waste, is a matter for the reader. For us listeners, it means that this interstellar overdrive conjures an image of the band at a very specific place in time, still trying to find its feet in some ways, but clearly developing strategies to allow them to continue as a going concern, both artistically and financially. In a 1978 interview for Pringle Program on Canadian radio, Wright compared Sid's avant-garde pop basis to the band's subsequent, quote, classical direction, noting that, with a saucer full of secrets, the band, quote, started doing things that no one had ever done before, like exploring space and textures and things like that, whereas before that, it was still based on the old format of songs. While one might argue rather vehemently that Sid's Floyd was doing plenty of exploring space and textures, the more interesting point is Wright's awareness of the relationship between the band's subsequent direction and the large-scale formal architecture characteristic of classical music. This ultimately culminated in stage works like The Wall, full of recurring light motifs and almost Wagnerian grandeur. For our purposes, it's enough to note how a struggling but surviving band applied these principles to a pre-existing work that, when you come down to it, was just Sid's misremembered attempt at a Burt Bacharach cover. <laughs>